Hi, I have another book for you, friends. This is a fractured fairy tale. You probably know the story Jack and the Beanstalk. Well, this story is called Kate and the Beanstalk. It's written by Mary Pope Osborne, who is the same author as the Magic Treehouse stories. Now, a fractured fairy tale is very similar to the original story that it came from, except they, there are some changes. So I had read a, another story for you, Sleepless Beauty. So this one is based off of Jack and the Beanstalk. Kate and the Beanstalk. Now fairy tales will have often the number three or seven. There's magic and there's good versus evil. Does this page remind you what part is magic? Kate and the Beanstalk. Long ago, a girl named Kate lived with her mother in a humble cottage. One day after a hard winter, Kate's mother was in despair. We are sure to die from hunger, she said, unless we sell our only cow to get money for food. Kate was a plucky girl who loved to help. Don't worry, she said, giving her mother a hug. I'll take care of everything. And she set out for the market with their cow. On the way, Kate met a beggar holding a small sack. Magic beans, the beggar said in a creaky voice. Oh, how extraordinary, said Kate when she saw them for the brown beans shone like dark gold. I don't think I can live without them. They can be yours in exchange for your cow, said the beggar. Without another thought, Kate traded her cow for the beans and rushed home to give them to her mother. But to Kate's surprise, her poor mother was horrified. Oh, our only hope is gone she cried. Now we will surely starve. And she tossed the beans out the window. Hungry and forlorn, Kate went to bed. During the night, Kate couldn't sleep. She got up and crept into the moonlit garden. She gasped. <gasps> For in the darkest corner, a giant beanstalk rose into the sky. It rose higher and higher and higher still till it disappeared behind the clouds. Does it never end? Kate whispered. Without waiting for morning, Kate began climbing the beanstalk. She climbed and climbed and climbed up and up and up. When Kate reached the top, light was creeping into the gray sky. Through a misty haze, she saw the most astonishing sight. Above the clouds was a countryside with fine woods, crystal stream, a rolling sheep meadow, and a mighty castle. As Kate stared in wonder, an old woman hobbled out of the woods. Hello, said Kate. Is that castle your home? No, my dear, the woman replied. It once belonged to a noble knight and his fair wife. They had a small infant and many treasures. But one day a monstrous giant came to steal from them. He killed the good man and took over his castle. Oh, how dreadful, said Kate. Fortunately, the knight's wife and baby were visiting the valley said the old woman. Afraid to return home, the grieving widow stayed below to raise her child. But alas, now they are very poor and close to starving. Hmm, who could that be? That 
is so sad, said Kate. Sadder than you know, my dear, replied the old woman. She looked deeply into Kate's eyes. Perhaps you are the one to right the terrible wrongs that have occurred. Me, said Kate. Are you afraid? I don't think so. I fear nothing when I'm doing right. How can I help? asked Kate. The knight had three precious treasures. A hen that lays golden eggs, a bag filled with gold coins, and the most wondrous harp in all the world, said the old woman. If you find these and return them to the knight's widow, then she and her child will not die from hunger. Kate took a deep breath. I shall try, she said. Kate bid farewell to the old woman, then strode across the sheep meadow. As she approached the castle, a giantess lunged into the early morning light. Help me, the huge woman roared. My husband makes me cook from the cock's crow to the owl's hoot. Whenever I hire servants, he gobbles them up. I'll be your servant, said Kate but you must hide me from the giant. Kate helped the giantess make breakfast until the sun came up. When she heard the giant coming down the hall, she trembled with fear. His footsteps sounded like booms of a cannon. Hide, whispered the giantess, and she pushed Kate into a closet. Peeking through the keyhole, Kate watched and listened. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an English woman. Be she alive or be she dead, I'll grind her bones to make my bread. Don't be silly, said the giantess. You only smell the wagon load of bacon I fried for your breakfast. Oh, <laughs> said the giant. When the giant finished eating, he said, Bring me the knight's hen. The giantess brought out a small brown hen. Lay, ordered the giant. And the little hen laid a golden egg. Ah, ha, 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 roared the giant. I love my lovely little stolen hen. Then he put down his head and fell asleep snoring as loud as thunder. Ever so quietly, Kate crept out of the closet. She grabbed the hen and rushed from the castle. She ran across the sheep meadow to the beanstalk. Down and down and down she climbed and climbed and climbed until she landed kerplop in the garden. Kate sighed with relief. <sighs> It's better if mother doesn't know of the danger I've been in, she whispered to the hen. Stay here until I can return you to the knight's poor widow. Kate hid the hen behind a bush and then slipped back inside her house. Kate knew she must disguise herself to return to the castle. That night she dressed in a wig and a beard and crept out of the moonlit garden and climbed the beanstalk again. Kate climbed and climbed and climbed, up and up and up. Look at her disguise. Hmm. In the light before dawn, Kate crossed the sheep meadow and knocked on the castle door. When the giantess came out, she roared, Help me! I need a servant! The last one stole our hen and ran away! All happened as before. Kate helped the giantess make breakfast until the sun came up. And when they heard the giant's booming footsteps and bellowing voice, the giantess hid Kate in the closet. Fee, fi, fo, funum. I smell the blood of an English woman. Be she alive or be she dead, I'll grind her bones to bake my bread. 
Calm down, said the giantess. You only smell the mountain of hash I made for your breakfast. Ah, said the giant. And when the giant finished eating, he said, Bring me the knight's money bag. The giantess brought out a bag filled with gold coins, and the giant greedily counted them all. Ha, 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 he roared. I love my lovely little stolen coin. Soon the giant's head began to nod. Kate watched him fall asleep. Then she crept out and grabbed the money bag. She ran out of the castle and across the sheep meadow to the beanstalk. Down and down and down, she climbed and climbed and climbed until she landed, kerplop, in the garden. Goodness, said Kate, what a day. I must hide these coins until I can return them to the knight's poor widow. Kate hid the money bag with the hen and then slipped back inside her house. That night, Kate disguised herself once again and started up the beanstalk. She climbed and climbed and climbed up and up and up. Notice they said climbed and climbed and climbed up and up and up. And this is the third night she went up. There were three things she needed to get from the giant. Hmm, there's that three. What's the magic thing? What was the magic? Hmm, the magic bean. She ran across the sheep meadow and just as the sun came up she knocked on the castle door when the giantess came out she grabbed kate and cried help me i need a servant the last one stole our money bag and ran away again all happened as before kate helped the giantess make breakfast Soon the giant's footsteps boomed down the hall and giant, the giantess hid Kate in the closet. Fee, fi, fo, funum. I smell the blood of an English woman. Be she alive or be she dead, I'll grind her bones to make my bread. You old fool, said the giantess. You only smell the sea of fish soup I made for your breakfast. Oh, said the giant. When the giant finished his soup, he cried, Bring me the knight's singing harp. Another bit of magic, along with the hen laying golden eggs. Three bits of magic. The giantess brought out a magnificent harp, the only one of its kind in the world. The harp sparkled with diamonds and rubies, and it had strings made of gold. Sing, bellowed the giant. The harp began to sing a sad, haunting tune. It sang of the past, of the noble knight, his lost wife and child, of golden days and starry nights. The harp's lovely song nearly broke Kate's heart. When the giant fell asleep, she crept out from behind the door, seized the harp, and ran away with it. But the harp was so frightened, it sang high, fearful notes. Help me! Help me! Help me! Quiet, said Kate. I'm going to return you to the knight's poor widow. But the giant had already been awakened. He jumped up, and with a shout, he ran after Kate. Kate flew like the wind across the sheep meadow. She grabbed the beanstalk and started down with the harp, the giant fast on her heels. Down and down and down, she climbed and climbed and climbed, and the giant climbed and climbed and climbed right after her. As soon as Kate's feet touched the ground, she shouted, Mother! Bring the axe! Hurry! Kate's mother ran out with the axe and Kate grabbed it. Stand back, mother! Kate cried. With one mighty blow, Kate chopped the beanstalk in two. Down and down it fell. Down through the sky and down fell the giant. Woom! 
down into the garden, breaking his neck. The ground shook like an earthquake. Kate's mother took one look and cried out in horror, oh, that's the giant that killed your father. My father, asked Kate. Before her mother could answer, a fairy approached in a chariot drawn by two peacocks. More magic. Greetings, brave Kate, she said. As queen of the fairies, I have long wanted to avenge the treachery done to the good knight. But first I needed to know if his daughter was worthy of her inheritance. So I disguised myself as both the beggar and the old woman and sent you on your quest to your father's castle. My father's castle? Kate looked at her mother who nodded. I never spoke of your father after he was slain, Kate's mother said. He would be most proud of you now. Kate hugged her mother and they wept for the sorrow and wonder of it all. Then they climbed into the chariot and rose through the clouds to the castle that was once theirs again. Up and up and up. Kate asked the giantess to stay on as their cook. Thank you for your kindness, said the giantess. Would you like a biscuit and jam? Indeed said Kate and her mother, and the giantess served them a biscuit as big as a cow. It's a big biscuit. Very similar to Jack and the Beanstalk, with the twist at the end of that castle really belonging to Kate and her mom. Hope you enjoyed.